Oh, wrong guy. Oh. oh. Do I get a start? I'll start. I didn't even see you there. Hey, Zach. How's it going? Good to see you, Michael. Hey, man, how are you? Uh, you know, I've been better. This time last year, <clears throat> we were we were on a path, man. We were we were rolling, but uh, I think what was it that yesterday was the Georgia game last year, something like that. Kind of different circumstances, but yeah. Strange days indeed. Um, let's start with your game. You were a little off this week. Uh, were you making some tweaks, adjustments, trying to do something different? What led to some of that? Uh, I don't like making excuses. I just I, I didn't hit the ball as well as I should have. I, I, I wasn't 100%, but uh, I'll, I'll turn around this game and I'll have, a, I'll have a good game. I'll hit the ball well this time. Um, <clears throat> and we, the goal too last game was not allow uh, number six to beat us uh, in the return game. And I think we, we accomplished that. So, um, and that's kind of, that was kind of our game plan. And I did have subpar numbers and uh, I shouldn't have taken out a uh, first down marker the week before, but uh, I'll be, like I said, I'll be fine for Florida. <clears throat> Things are uh, dropping like flies. I saw one got bent this weekend. Um, I know. Last year, you know, it was the you name it award. This year, it's the, the specialist holding down the fort. I guess just what does it mean to be up for the raid guy and, and have Kate up uh, for the growth zone? I mean, shoot, it's it's awesome. Uh, it's for, in, in my perspective, though, I I think I'd rather be uh, on a national championship contender like last year because people were like, oh, dude, you're not getting playing time. I'm like, well, so what? We're gonna, we're winning. Um, but now this year I've had the opportunity to punt a lot and that's, you know, it, it's it's cool, but it's also, you know, losing possessions a lot is, is a problem. It's, it's hard to go out there knowing that when you go out there, people are like, dang, we're punting the ball again, you know? Uh, but on Cade's end, he's, he's having a hell of a year. I think, I, I don't know what he is on from 50 yards or further, but he's, he's, he's killing it. And uh, it seems like almost every game his first kick of the game is a 50 yard field goal and uh, I'm pretty sure he's got the best or if not one of the best um, percentages from 50 plus um, of anybody in the country I, I don't know if, I mean there's, I'm sure there's somebody that's like two for two or three for three but I'm pretty sure he has like eight or nine attempts or maybe you know whatever from 50 plus and he's he's doing well. <clears throat> yeah Zach uh, Ron Higgins playing a rag you had a really introspective tweet yesterday. Um, it said, people think this year is normal. It's not. I couldn't imagine being a freshman this season. Nobody wants to address issues like mental health, but imagine not being able to enjoy yourself away from football. No matter what you do, you need an outlet. There are none. Can, can you just talk about that? Um, I, it wasn't directly meant for Eric Gilbert. I think people took it as that. It wasn't, it, it was an in general. I didn't take it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> well, um, but uh, this year, especially after last year, like the, the sophomore class would have seen it. Um, but our experience and the, the way things were last year, the excitement, anywhere you go, you heard positive things about LSU football. We had arguably the greatest season ever. Um, you had countless things to, you're it just an excitement of, uh, you could feel it in Baton Rouge. Like the city itself was lit up all the time. Everywhere was packed. Any Anytime you went somewhere, it was it was a fun, experience and now I'm talking anywhere like you know, I remember going to Rouse's after practice and people hearing people talk about oh my god the Tigers are unbelievable this year well you know fast forward to this season and it's the exact opposite plus the pandemic on top of that <clears throat> so you're not if you're a freshman or even a sophomore <clears throat> and I'm sure it's affecting upperclassmen too but they've, they've come in their own and they know what they need to do and they're all, a lot are also focused on going to the NFL so they have like a routine set in stone that they know that they need to fulfill in order to play at the next level, whereas the underclassmen are still trying to figure themselves out, and they're trying to understand, or, or excuse me, they got for the freshmen, they got pitched a uh, dream last year. They went on recruiting visits and told certain things like, "Oh, it's going to be this way, it's going to be that way," but all that came to an abrupt halt when we had a pandemic occur. And I, I get it; that's not just here; that's everywhere. But add on top of that, you have to follow up the greatest college football season in history. And some of the greatest players we've ever had come through LSU on the team, and they're all stars in the NFL now. And it's kind of like, it's just, it's, it's different now. It's not the same atmosphere. And that's not because of anything we're doing. We're just not playing to the caliber that we have the, the players. We're just not playing up to the standard that the players uh, can and, and will. I mean, look at, I mean, we have huge recruits here. We have great players coming in. And right now we're not, we're not where we need to be, but that's okay. And that's part of the growing pain. And people are frustrated. We're, we're frustrated. 
Um, but I think I think the future is bright, and people want to dwell and say, "Oh my God, this and that." But like <laughs> we were 15 and 0 last year. How, how are we going to replicate that without uh, the the upperclassmen, NFL first round, all the all the first rounders, all the talent? All, how are we going to replicate that with a young such a young team? And uh, and expectations should be higher at LSU. We we should be. Uh, uh, a contender every year, and we will be. It's just this year, just things didn't pan out the way we wanted, and and the way the expectations wanted. And um, but back to the mental health side of it, it's just a. Uh, it's hard to. It's hard to, when you don't know. I'm trying to think of how a situation specifically, but when you get away from football, and you outside of maybe video games or staying in your dorm or your apartment, you're, you're told you you shouldn't really go anywhere because you don't want to be selfish and give the team, expose the team to coronavirus, that's a, that's an issue. And I know a lot of guys aren't doing stuff because of that. And like, like I said already, a lot of teams are going through that, but a lot of teams are like, you know, if, in the case of Florida A&M, whatever, they're, they're having a hell, hell of a season. They're doing well. They're one loss. Alabama was undefeated. Um, when you're winning, it, it kind of hides the fact that things are so different. And um, that's why I feel like things here like you said, or it just feels so different from last year because it is different from last year, and people can't. Uh, it, it just it's more difficult to enjoy uh, life outside of here when you're not supposed to do anything. And that, like you said, that's everywhere, but it's it's probably made worse here just because of the situation at hand. And Zach, you're a tenured person on this team. I mean, what can you tell us about? The locker room right now. What what are the conversations players are having? Is there is there a unity? Is there what, what what's going on right now? I mean, I, I, there's no issue with with players and and coaches. There's no. It's it's more of a um, uh, we're disappointed in the season we're, we're, that we're having. Got you know guys are going to be hard on themselves because we're not performing to the standards that we feel that we could, and um, th that's that's a huge issue when you know you're you know in the case of a, a you know, young player, freshman, whatever, you come here after a, a national championship season and we don't have the caliber of season that we felt that we could have. And, you know, we, did, we never really got to get on a roll. We never got to stack three, four wins together. And whenever you don't have that rhythm of, of production in terms of winning, it's just, a, it's just a different environment that you're not used to. And that would be for the case of players that have returned from last year after going, you know, 15 straight wins in a row. Like, talk about a rhythm. That's unbelievable. But there's no uh, animosity or, or um, what do you call it? There's no sh strife. It's just a it's a it's a hard year, and um, people are trying to figure it out. And um, you know, is the morale down a little bit? Of course, but that that's because we're we're not playing well, and we, we need to. We need to improve our game, and uh, I, I hope we we can this week against Florida.